Even though it ended 70 years ago, there are, amazingly, still relics of the First World War lying around on the ground if you look carefully. Old rusted railway engines. A carriage wheel lying in the undergrowth. Sections of long since abandoned track. The handle for working a set of points. Can there really be so much left after all these years? And what purpose could they have served? This was supposed to be a static war. Yet everywhere here is evidence of movement, of action, of transport. In the area of the Great Battle of the Somme, life goes on today. The Somme Canal is still in use for commercial traffic as well as pleasure craft. And a railway that's been sleeping in the undergrowth all these years is coming back to life. Today, on a fine summer afternoon, you can go for a trip alongside the Somme Canal become a pleasant outing for all the family to enjoy as they set off from the local station bound for the woods and the open plain beyond. I'm riding on the little Narragansett railway from Poitiers to Dompierre in the valley of the Somme, in Picardy country in France, and everybody's enjoying themselves, there are lots of children here, so much so that it's very difficult indeed to realize that over 60 years ago you could well have called this literally a railway of death because it was a railway which carried the bombs and the shells and the parts of the big guns and all the instruments of warfare up to the front, instruments which resulted in the death of literally thousands of men. When the railway was working 70 years ago, it revealed the true face of war, a desolate moon landscape, horses everywhere, like the men doomed perhaps to be killed or injured by shell fire. A railway run by soldiers for soldiers. A railway to feed the hungry guns and sustain the slaughter. A railway to carry shells and soldiers to the front line. A railway of death indeed. How many of these cheerful men would be alive a year from now? Perhaps even a week? For the First World War was hungry for men, but it was also hungry for supplies, without which it couldn't function. Ammunition, food, medical supplies, clothing, gas masks. The towns and villages for five miles on either side of the front lines were obliterated by gunfire almost immediately. And with them went the standard gauge railways that looked after the people's needs in peacetime. Existing railways were smashed to smithereens along with the rolling stock, the locomotives, the stations, the signals, the track, the lock. In many towns, not a single building remained standing. Even the roads became impassable. So the army had to provide its own railways, and the easiest way to do it was with narrow gauge tracks which could be put down quickly and easily with a minimum of fun. It could go right up to the front amidst the guns firing. When the war was over, part of the line that served the Somme battlefront was taken over and used to ferry supplies to a sugar beet factory. When the sugar beet came by road, the railway was abandoned and taken over by a gallant band of volunteers. They are now restoring to working order old locomotives, some of which worked the line during the First World War, including a captured German engine. This is Grand Am, uh, President du Chemin de Fer, Voici Dompierre, une histoire, s'il vous plaît. The work of reconstruction is supervised by the president of the Preservation Society, Monsieur Blondin. He took me on a tour of the engine shed and explained how the society was formed, where the volunteers come from, 
The fact that this is the world's largest collection of 60 centimeter gauge engines. And he even showed me how one of the preserved locomotives, an old American Alco cook, worked. Oui, alors c'était une locomotive à vapeur, donc vous avez ici le foyer, le foyer, et ici vous avez la chaudière. La vapeur. La vapeur sert à faire tourner les roues, contrôler le régulateur. Railways have found a place in battle since the days of the Crimea. Here men are laying track in South Africa during the days of the Boer War. A Boer War troop train in action, filmed in the year 1899 by the pioneer newsreel cameraman Joe Rosenthal. Sometimes the locomotives gave out, so the mules took over to pull the train in an emergency. Railways bore the brunt of troop leaders. And in snow, this time back in the days of the First World War. Where the standard gauge track had survived, they often met at crossing places, as in this very unusual shot of a narrow gauge train crossing the standard gauge track. This train is heavily loaded with a supply of that sinister emblem of the trenches, barbed wire. 